Are you looking at moving to the southern part of Colorado, or you already live in southern Colorado, or you live anywhere else and you're looking to visit places and do fun things in the southern part of Colorado? That's what we're gonna to cover today. There's nine things that you might, might not be aware of in the southern part of Colorado. Be sure and look at the map that I'm referencing because just directly west of Denver might not always be considered the southern part of Colorado, but the map kind of goes there and starts and moves into the south and southeast parts of Colorado because you don't know what you don't know. So let's check it out. people just like you every day to help them discover where to live and invest in real estate and sell property for top dollar when the time is just right for them. My name is Leif Jacobson. I'm an ex-cop turned realtor, also known as Safe Leif. If you're new to this channel, subscribe so you're first to learn about all things Colorado real estate. My contact information is below. I'm excited to hear from you. Please reach out by text, call, or email after this video or shoot me a calendar event and I will reach out to you, whatever works best. So we're covering nine things that you might not know in Southern Colorado as far as fun places and activities to check out. Let's check them out now. The first cool and unique thing that you might not know to check out in the Southern part, kind of mid to Southern part of Colorado, is sledding or surfing in the Great Sand Dunes National Park Preserve. Sand surfing and sledding is something so unique that you can do in the Great Sand Dunes National Park. You use sandboards or sand sleds that are designed for sand. It's important to note that you can't use snow gear, you know, like snowboards do not necessarily work. It's gotta be designed for sand. Snowboards and sleds don't work unless the sand is wet. There's no equipment rental inside the park and you gotta rent before entering. So you need to get your gear before you go down there. You rent equipment from nearby shops, you know, like the Oasis store. The dunes are accessible a half mile walk from the main parking area. They say to be sure to enjoy sand surfing and sledding away from vegetated areas. And it's family friendly. The kids enjoy playing in Madano Creek and it flows only in the spring months. But it's a really cool creek that flows right through the valley. And the on-site visitor center shares history of the area as well. The second thing to do or visit is the small charming town of Salida, which is located 140 miles south of Denver. It's preserved wild west buildings and retro stores on F Street are a cool attraction. It's the largest historic district in the state. It has Riverside Park along the Arkansas River. It's a perfect spot for lounging, picnicking, or exploring. There's nearby hiking options that are awesome. Water Dog Lake and Hunt Lake are a couple of those. There's also a couple 14ers, which are mountains that are over 14,000 feet. Uh, that's Mount Shivano and Tabagechi Peak. More low key and relaxation options here are Cottonwood Hot Springs and Mount Princeton Hot Springs Resort. Mount Princeton is a local and luxury hot spring experience where it's right on the river and you can check out their numerous pools. It's a great atmosphere, kind of a spa-like atmosphere right on the river. It's an awesome place to hang out. The third thing you might want to do in Southern Colorado is to go whitewater rafting. The Arkansas River originates in Central Colorado and runs all the way to Arkansas. It offers thrilling rafting experiences. There's easy routes and advanced routes. Some of the easier ones are in Lower Browns Canyon, but the Little Gore Canyon is a good family-friendly option. Some of the more advanced routes for people who are looking for more of a hardcore rafting experience is the Royal Gorge. Adventurous trips with steep drops and Pine Creek route for kind of more advanced rafters. The fourth thing to check out in Southern Colorado is the Colorado State Fair. It's an annual family-friendly fair located in Pueblo, just south of Colorado Springs. It's called Colorado Tradition since 1872. It features live music, farm animals, competitions, and carnival rides, traditional rodeos, and live performances. There are car derbies and monster truck shows, and pretty affordable price tickets. So for about $14 for adults, $7 for kids, half the price, and children four and under are free. The fifth thing to check out in Southern Colorado, which is super cool, is the Royal Gorge Bridge. It's a suspension bridge uh, in just outside of Canyon City, and just kind of southwest of Colorado Springs. The Royal Gorge Bridge Park is 60 miles southwest of Colorado Springs. The bridge was built between June and November 1929 at a cost at that time of $350,000, which would be equivalent to $4.4 million in 2021 dollars. 
and came in $100,000 over budget, which would be today's dollars, $1.3 million over budget. The project was financed by Lon Piper, as president of the Royal Gorge Bridge and Amusement Company of San Antonio, Texas, is where he was based. Piper hired George Cole as the chief engineer, and the bridge was completed about six months with no deaths or injuries, which is super impressive. The formal opening occurred in December 8th of, 8th of 1929. Piper agreed to a 20-year lease of the gorge and surrounding land, which is owned by Canyon City. He paid a $1,000 annual fee, which would be equivalent these days to just about $13,000, to the city, which, which with a reduced fee of $500, equivalent to $6,300 today in some years of hardship. It's the highest suspension bridge in all of the United States at 956 feet. It's thrilling but safe engineering, comprised of 4,100 sturdy cables. It's engineered to hold more than 2 million pounds. Optional aerial gondola for crossing the gorge for those who don't want to walk the bridge. You can bungee jump off the bridge, which is fabulous. You can explore the visitor center and plaza theater. Uh, visitors recommend a few different things. Cloud Scraper Zip Line, the Royal Rush Sky Coaster, and Via Ferrata. Visit during the off season for smaller crowds. The sixth thing to check out in Southern Colorado is driving the highest road in America. The scenic byway to Mountain Blue Sky. It's 35 miles west of Denver. You gain 7,000 feet of elevation to the 14 130 foot summit. Watch for wildlife like mountain goats and bighorn sheep. Plan for at least an hour drive each way. It's seasonal road, so you can only access it from Memorial Day to Labor Day because of weather and snow and ice. Reservations may be required depending on when you go. There's an optional hike to the peak for avid hikers, one of the more popular 14ers in the state to climb. The seventh thing you might know about is visiting the ghost town of St. Elmo. One of many Colorado ghost towns is left empty from mining struggles in the early 1900s. You can explore St. Elmo to the well-preserved ghost town. Others should note the town is still home to a few residents. It's located 110 miles west of Colorado Springs. It's got a unique insight into the state's mining history. Souvenirs are available at the General Store, which is open seasonally. The eighth thing that you can see about experiencing Southern Colorado in a specific time of year, which is right during the fall, is driving gorgeous Kenosha Pass. It's particularly stunning in Colorado because Kenosha Pass is one of the most popular routes to enjoy Colorado's stunned fall foliage. It's limited and it's located 65 miles from Denver. You can explore aspen groves with vibrant yellow, orange, and red leaves. The colors are astonishing. It's seasonal, it typically runs from September to mid-October, or when the peak of those colors are just changing. And one warning is that the pass gets busy in the fall. There's no question there's lots of traffic because you're one of thousands of people who are coming to do the same thing. You can consider a less crowded option, uh, like Keebler Pass near Crested Butte, and it features one of the largest, most photographed aspen groves in the entire country. The ninth thing you can check out in Colorado, in Southern Colorado, is that you can walk where the dinosaurs walk. The most extensive dinosaur tracks in all of North America. Uh, it starts at the Withers Canyon Trailhead and descends into the canyon. Look for ancient rock art and ruins of an 1800 settlement along the trail. You can hike 11.2 miles round trip to the Comanche National Grasslands. Carry plenty of water because you need to stay hydrated. It's a heck of a hike. The summer months can bring extreme temperatures, so be careful with that as well. Make sure you do it safely. Observe dinosaur tracks along the Purgatory River. The tracks include those of long-necked herbivores and T. rex allosaurus. Consider taking the auto tour for a guided experience if you don't want to do it on foot. So those are nine things you might want to check out in Southern Colorado that you may not know about. I love providing information and adventures and places to explore to folks. Let me know if I missed anything that you think is fabulous in the Southern part of Colorado. I'd love to add that in. Love to hear your thoughts as well and any other videos you'd like to see covering topics that I can research for you and help you understand as far as where you want to go and what you want to do and where you want to live and how you want to live there. I look forward to doing more videos with you in the future. Look forward to hearing your feedback and input. Reach out by text, call, or email. I'd love to hear from you. Look forward to connecting and we'll see you on the next video.